are you pursuing law on the side because you make really convincing arguments and i think this this particular <laughs> stupid would become a video and pass it around whenever people are talking about uh this guy doesn't have a life here no <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, guys. And, and we can't end this segment with what your day look like, like outside work. Yeah, there's no day. I mean, it's just work. there is no <laughs> there. <laughs> there, there is a day. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, did yeah. this like for your board exam as well for 12th maybe right yeah 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 so uh, 11 in 11 12th in like senior uh, studies you get option to choose one option subject so people call mm -hmm. it humanities also which is uh, similar to this, the same arts only and uh, fine arts is also the same so we uh, like you get to uh, do paintings and posters like proper commercial work we learn about commercial work how commercial uh, art works uh, like works so that kind of art we used to learn and we learn about all the all kind of forms like uh, posters also then the calligraphy and everything like whatever is there that can be taught and mostly manually so we are not exposed to uh, the digital art maybe now schools might have done but uh, while i was in school i was only doing manual thing but that that is how my teacher told me that you know you are good at it and you should go for it uh, so you mentioned about different fields in designing right how did you zero in on say yeah. graphic designing uh, did it happen over time or did you know right after you say pass out from 12th that you wanted to get into graphic uh, yeah, so uh, so what happened is uh, when I was in 11th, I got to know about all this thing and I used to keep searching, ki, you know, like what is applied arts and all. I didn't know that applied art may there are other terms also other than graphic designing. But then while I was uh, checking for my colleges, like where do I want to go, which college is giving me fine arts, because I didn't know that BFA, there is a course for uh, fine arts also, there is a bachelor degree for the same. So I thought I will also have to do some BTEC, BCom, whatever <laughs> that is there. So yeah, so that's how I came to know about uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts. And uh, then I came to know that there are options while I'm doing the same bachelor degree, there will be options and you can then come down to one category where you want to go. So I was always keen uh, in uh, graphic designing. So I was like, yeah, I want to do this only because I was into posters and, you know, like commercial work. So that's how I came to like graphic designing. So were your parents supportive or you anytime like had to convince them for opting back <laughs> for opting design in the bachelor side? Right? Yeah, that, that happened, that happened. <laughs> so <laughs> How like, did you go like, about that? Every Indian parent, I was told very strictly uh, during 10th that you can't do it. So I was like, okay, I won't do it. Then uh, like uh, luckily I got fine arts and uh, there when I had an interview, I had an interview during the school time. And she uh, told me to, you know, go for fine arts. And she convinced somehow my father that, you know, she's good at it and let her take fine arts. That's how it happened. And during the college also, I remember my parents were not very convinced that, you know, it's a good career. Then uh, I, I read a lot about graphic designing and everything. And I had one line to convince them. <laughs> so I told them uh, that uh, from in the plane, aeroplane, to the pencil everything is designed by graphic designer so you know there is a lot of requirement but it's not a very famous or like popular in india so that's how you know like he's somewhat somehow agreed and i was like yeah let's do it yep but see you said it's not popular in india so uh, bahar <laughs> is it more popular the field of fine yeah. or uh, how how is the uh, scenario like in india and what is maybe the future scope in this field in India as well. Yeah, so like in India, the uh, graphic designing is very new thing. And now at least people know about design because there are a lot of new businesses coming out. And now people know the importance of logos and, you know, advertising and social media presence and everything. But uh, earlier, like uh, five years back, nobody knew about all this stuff. Nobody knew ki you you get a designer to design the logo also. Nobody knew about any logos. So that's how it worked in India. But now the, the industry is growing like very rapidly and things are getting better. Obviously, it is uh, popular in uh, other countries. But in India, now the things are going very normal and, you know, like good. So what do you think is the reason, right, why it's more popular in other countries, which might not be like the case with India, right? Because I see, right, with the technological advancement, this thing is definitely coming into the picture, right? Because any startup or uh, any business, right, needs advertisements or marketing. And for those, they need to have a good design. So what yeah, are your right. thoughts on that, right? So How it will firstly, go in India and what kind of Indian brand, yeah, so Indian brands, they uh, mostly believed in word of mouth. 
earlier mm. so uh, also we used to see very less ads you know like same kind of mm. ads and uh, now we have a lot of options also technology is growing in india so that is one factor uh, because you know because of technology and because of businesses people are uh, moving towards these and they are noticing these things pehle people used to think about their own things you know they they, they used to think that designing and this these are all uh, like expenses that they don't want to now people mm-hmm. treat uh, the designing as their investment so that is the major difference how their mindset is changing and that's how the industry is also changing i think paisa ab zyada log lagate hain designing mein no because designers yeah. are getting equally paid as well uh, <laughs> yeah and especially with this creator economy Hopefully. right a lot of design, yeah. all the art fields are getting more important now and it's not like he khali software engineering ki abhi acche kama rahe hain almost creator economy yeah. is not doing anything right now so exactly because people get to know na how the work is going and you know what is the process because pehle for them art is only painting and stuff they didn't knew a, a digital art is a work or something because uh, earlier there were very few advertising agencies now the yeah. advertising agencies are like in hundreds and thousands so that's also a big change yeah that's true uh, but what do you think is uh, how, how can people get into graphic designing uh, as of now uh, you might have heard of it uh, by going to college or some of your friends or some of the seniors who might have gotten into graphic designing but i think most people won't even know that such a field exists right so how do you think people can yeah. um, explore this field hone their skills get into uh, this particular domain also just to add uh, right uh, just before yeah. you start so just wanted to confirm right for the people listening to this podcast uh, is it really necessary uh, to do bachelor before in designing and then only uh, you will be able to get into this field right yeah that's that's a good point yeah so uh first of all it's not necessary to have a bachelor degree in fine arts because uh, the art field is a field which welcomes everybody you don't have to have any degree or something you only have to have the skill that is the main requirement and for people who really want to come into the field from the beginning uh, i think now there are a lot of options there are a lot of courses uh besides bachelor degree also so if there there's somebody who don't have bachelor degree they can go for the courses and for the people for school students they can already opt for a uh, humanities and fine arts and i'm sure there must be other options also new but that that will be coming not currently but that will be coming soon because uh, uh, i think there are some changes that government is also announced that you can have different career options like uh, ai is going to be a main focus point for schools now so that's how they can go for it and uh, for colleges yeah obviously bachelor of fine arts is an option where uh, a lot of colleges are giving this uh, degree also now uh, the number of colleges providing the same degree was less earlier but now it is growing so the options are more now correct so how people can go and like learn about graphic designing what software or what skills uh, uh, how how they can learn and go and explore the field right um, maybe if you can help us with some resources or something right uh, where you started from early in your journey yeah so uh, yeah so you know people talk about degrees and colleges and courses and everything yeah so these these all places will only teach about the software like how to uh, uh, work on a software or, you know like there are a lot of softwares now photoshop illustrator figma canva people consider everything as you know design software that is that is all good you need to learn few of them but software is not a design skill you know like a designer who knows how to uh, work on the software is not a designer designer must have the skill to visualize you know mm. like if 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 we see something and somebody tells about you know like i want to have this kind of some design we, the designer should be able to visualize how it should look and we mm. should be able to visualize before making it that if it, if it is going to look good or not Be- because that is the judgment we have and other people don't because uh, while working in the agency also the same thing happens we think of an idea and we try to put it in words in a, in a manner that the other person can understand what we are telling you know so visualization is a skill that 
people will learn like gradually by making maybe uh, replicating the old ads already or replicating the uh, previous work or uh, thinking of something you know like from scratch anything which is also very can be casual also but gradually people learn it and it's it's a skill that you get by practice only there's no shortcut to it so yeah practice is must yeah and one has to be creative of yeah. course yeah and everyone can't be creative as well so that limits the option for a lot of people to get into <laughs> yeah, yeah you can include me there i'm not at all <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah think... that happens yeah, we, we spoke about uh, graphic designing and how people can get into this. Um, but what are some of the challenges or problems that you face on, a, on an ongoing basis as a graphic designer that maybe you might not, not have imagined earlier when you got into this field, but it, some of the risks or challenges associated with this field? Okay, there's one one very, very interesting thing that happens because while we are in college or not working in the industry, we feel like this ad could have been better and this this particular visual could have been better. But what we don't understand is everything, every task, every uh, uh, project that we get is time-based and we have a certain time slot that we have to work in and Obviously, as artists, we know this can be better and we can like keep making it better, better, better for 100 times, but the time is limited. So we have to provide the task in the same time. And that is why people outside the industry thinks this can be better, but this can't be because there is a time limit to everything. So that's one thing that misconception is there uh, for the people who are not in the industry. Uh, another thing, another challenge is the uh, creative block, like every creative person can relate to this because, you know, like every time keep creating, 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 it, it becomes like a, like a huge task and then there's a time when our mind is exposed and we are blank. This happens a lot of time and uh, yeah, like we need break, our brains need break. So this is Brain one is problem that but we you must be going outside and like exploring some of the new stuff that you haven't been done yet, right? So where you yeah. usually go to uh, see those designs or like those new areas of your you know, just you to know, explore, right? What what all you try? So when I talk about break, break means I'm not thinking about anything creative at all because when you uh, mm -hmm. the more harder you try, uh, the far you go. You know you don't get it. And whenever, like, we keep exploring, like, we'll be walking on street, we'll see some hoarding, and we'll be like, oh, wow, this is amazing, you know, this could be an ad. Like, not just an ad hoarding, but anything else, and, you know, we, you can think like that. So, that's how the creative process works. It is not, uh, you don't have to force it a lot. It, it comes naturally also, and sometimes with a lot of research and studies, like, the previous projects and previous uh, ads, campaigns, everything. So it comes with studies and practice, obviously. Uh, but do you think working for these agencies, uh, wherein you have a very short amount of time, as you mentioned, and you deliver what they have asked for, right? And what they they would have asked yeah. for might not be in alignment with what you're making. And there are yeah, a lot of that happens. Companies. So don't you think uh, this kind of a model uh, curbs creativity in one sense? It's It doesn't let you express yourself in the truest manner. Uh, but you have of to follow a particular script uh, to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely true. It happens. It happens with, I'm sure it happens with a lot of artists and like every artist. This happens every day. It's it's a daily process. But, you know, you, you have to, you know, first of all, it's a career. You can't do anything about it because the industry is such that everything is very time bound. So that is why I love my page because it gives me the freedom to post anytime I want and whatever kind of stuff I want. So, I mean, yeah, you, you have to get usual to it and you have to work it out. Yeah, there's no other option. The most you can do is you can convey the client like this is not uh, realistic and, you know, we can we'll have to work with the time and everything. But uh, maj majority of the time it happens. But uh, so I think in, in an agency model, you will have people above you, like managers who might uh, be directly working with the client to set the expectations, right? So in, yeah. in, in that perspective, you won't be have having a liberty to change the overall model that, that has been decided. But maybe you can uh, work on the specific requirement assigned to you to design something. 
right? So how you can maybe, uh, maybe touch upon the model of an agency, how it works, and where do you lie as a designer over there? So uh, first of all, uh, I mean, most of the agencies uh, have this chain where, you know, there are people at every stages. But uh, when it comes to creative thing or, you know, when it comes to visual uh, or creative ads or something, uh, the designer is always the one who is responsible for the timeline. And whenever uh, there can be two, three people between you and the client, like the designer and the client, but there will be a uh, communication between them also because uh, if i get an ad and I, I i get an idea that this is has to this has to be done and so in our agency specifically we tell the timeline the designers we tell the timeline that this will take this much time the other people don't decide it because we know it how much time it is going to take and then we can convey we convey to the client so I hope it works like that in a majority of the agencies. And if it doesn't, then there might be a problem. <laughs> but I think, yeah, like designers have a point of view and I think that it is considered. So you just told, right, um, between you and the customer or the client, there can be two, three people yes. in between who might be communicating the requirements, right? And <clears throat> yeah, for the design, I think... Uh, Understanding the requirements is one thing, but like uh, uh, communicating it uh, through um, like product gets communicated to this design only, right? So how do you go yeah. about and understand that requirement in depth to visualize and then further design it, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that process if you want to. Okay, so first of all, every brand, every uh, client that we work for, they have their own set of uh, guidelines. Like every brand has their own colors, uh, color schemes they have fonts there you know uh, the kind of language they want to use like visual language so it is different for every client so we understand that we have to follow this particular path like for she cement it is always a realistic approach we go for realistic things and you know photo manipulation and that kind of stuff but for the brand like grow there is always illustration and very vector kind of art and it is also very infographics kind of you know it, it, it involves a lot of data and everything so every brand has their own, uh, you know, visual language and like a designer can easily understand what it is and you, you will have to follow it. Like every designer has to follow it. Otherwise, the client is not going to accept it. So we get it beforehand only. And then we, while making the design, we follow that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And, and what's say the most interesting project that you've been a part of? Uh, be it a freelance project or be it in your agency, if you can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so uh, obviously the logo projects that I do and the other projects that I do for my clients are obviously very interesting because that is why I pick them, the freelance ones. And for the, uh, with the agency, I did this uh, uh, better, uh, better pay for women. This was for uh, Indeed. And this was one of the best best campaigns I've ever worked with. And this this also went viral uh, on the LinkedIn. And, and uh, this campaign was specifically made for uh, Indian audience, for the uh, LinkedIn India, uh, India. And it was launched last year uh, in the month of March, maybe. This was in the month uh, for like Women's Day, specifically for Women's Day. And then the success of this campaign was so good that it, it was launched in other four five countries also so i mean not before the before the success also i love this campaign like personally this was one of the best i've worked with nice yeah i mean that that's pretty interesting the kind of work you get right um you never know what kind of campaign you'll be a part of and how that would impact other yeah. people. So is that what drives you in a manner uh, working in, 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 uh, in this creative field? The kind of impact you're able to have with certain projects or is it more on um, trying to- Satisfying your creative, your creative yeah. creative desire or yeah. what drives you towards your work? Actually, it is, it is a combination of both, you know, because mm. uh, first of all, uh, we love getting, you know, new kind of things on plate. Like every day we get new kind of projects. So that is one interesting thing that we don't have to put the numbers every day in the same task. So that is one thing that, you know, drives us. 
but also like new clients new kind of project new breeze that th those are very interesting things you know like i personally love working on new campaigns and specifically campaigns not just social media but uh, working on campaigns are very very interesting and i mean every brand who does campaigns knows that these things are uh, very big you know like you, you do it once in a month or in a year it, it is a big thing and for any designer working on campaigns specific and specifically for big brands that that's a big thing so yeah so while working on software kind of designs right <clears throat> we have seen like we do a lot of back and forth right uh, we yeah. code some design we got we got designs from designers and then we coded but then again there is a shift in the design in the requirements and then so it might be <laughs> happening for you as well right a lot of back and forth logos <laughs> so yeah this happens always those? i mean now we are used to it but changes mm -hmm. and the final 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 dot jpg it's a part of our <laughs> profession now <laughs> we can't avoid it <laughs> every designers yeah. have a life where half of our time is uh, gone in the changes only you have to do this change that change you know it keeps keeps coming and i think it's it's a process and we can't do anything about it and if talking about having a life um, how do you have a life of in the <laughs> and running an instagram page together and how do you even get time okay. to do that finally okay i should not be saying this but i don't think i have a life <laughs> because that's how <laughs> because that's how people take it but i'll tell you what honestly i love what i do and i'm very very happy with it i think this is what i love uh, about my life and this is what i considered as consider as life so you know like getting to work with big brands getting to work with the clients you want to like making work uh, and doing the design that you want and uh, showing it the way you want it to your own audience i mean that is amazing and nobody like not everybody has this freedom of doing it and also i feel yeah this is like a bit too much you know like full time job and page and freelance it's 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 quite too much but i just enjoy it so i do it <laughs> yeah once you start enjoying your work or like you really like your work right then going to work or like doing work doesn't feel like it yeah of course it doesn't it don't feel like work that's that's very true mm -hmm. it, it doesn't yeah. feel like a burden on me i i'm like you know even even on the weekends i feel like i can't waste my entire day like this you know i have to do something so that's how it works and i i just love it what do you think apart from um, the conventional education and courses that you can do is required for uh, any designer to get a job yeah so you know uh, our industry has this one very very big problem that uh, you ask for portfolio for freshers and freshers don't know how to make portfolio so that is where freshers are stuck with like how to get the first job and how to make a portfolio without having the first job so one thing that uh, freshers can do is they can uh, make uh, conceptual arts on any brand whichever br brand they want and whichever concept they uh, like and uh, they can make a portfolio out of it so and what is the criteria for the agencies to uh, take any designer is they want to see your skill they don't want to see kis brand ke liye kya banaya hai kitna acha banaya hai they want to know are you good at applying shadows and are you good at manipulation are you good at making uh, vector art that kind of stuff they don't want to see ki aap kya idea you know kitna acha idea kar sakte because there is a team for it and if you are not good at it that, that's not a problem people are there to help you and you can get better at it but uh, portfolio is something where you need to show your uh, skills you know how quickly you can do it how nicely you can do it so visual dikhana that is important so that's how people can build their portfolios with you know like making concept art and anything that they want so you were talking about minimalist designs right so would you like to like uh, talk more about it and like help us understand what are minimalist designs and why you chose this to be on your insta pages okay so <laughs> when i got to know about designing and instagram uh, majorly so instagram was flooded with minimal designs there was a there was a guy uh, a chai boy yes 
so uh, pe uh, he had a like great page and he used to put minimal designs about chai and you know very uh, uh, nice like creative stuff so people got uh, influenced obviously i was also one of them so it, it, it became like a trend and then there is an, uh, there was an also an agency uh, the minimalist not the face uh, the beauty uh, product one the other agency advertising agency so uh, it it became very popular and you know every designer on instagram started to make minimal designs so this this was like a trend that started and then uh, i was also obviously making that but then i thought like this is not something that will give my own identity because every design is the same design if i show my design or some other designer's design to anybody they'll be very confused whose design is this because there's no personal identity kind of thing so then i shifted from that to my own color palette stuff and then i started creating very very minimal designs but uh, it it was also like you know i wanted my designs to have an impact and it, it to have a long life like i wanted my design to be relatable for after 5 years also so i wanted that kind of designs to put on my page because uh, the earlier the minimal designs we used to create while covid that was more on covid stuff the uh, regular uh, stuff that was happening and it was around that only so you know it has a very limited time span, span that you know like people after two days won't understand what it is about so i was like you know i want something impactful that will go a long way so i've observed right you have these quotes on your posts and then the design related to it right so how do you go about it first you think about the quote and then visualize it and then design or you just fit the quote into your design <laughs> you first design something like that so uh, okay so mainly majorly how does a design process work is you think of an idea then you think of a copy it is opposite for me <laughs> i think of a copy first and i like i find a quote that is nice and that i agree with and i like it that's how it goes and then i think of a visual design like any line circles however i can put it so it's opposite for me and i think a lot of designers must be doing this but uh, this is not a like regular practice people uh, do it other ways so yeah that's how it goes like i think of a quote first and then i make the design but that's a great job that you are doing because i really like the those lines and circles whatever you fit <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense with the quote <laughs> thank you well, definitely a good job because manka uh, the person who she got inspired from is now following her on instagram chai boy uh, who i've been yeah. following as well for a long time now on instagram but yeah i, I just saw when we reached out to you and you mentioned initially about chai boy and like yeah is he following you he, he does follow you and that that's oh good. you check that yeah. that that <laughs> okay, okay the common followers comes up right I, if i follow that guy and he follows you it will show up so yeah i i try to thoda underplay but uh, like there are a lot of people i used to get inspired and they are now following me so yeah that's a good thing <laughs> that's a good, that's a big achievement yeah yeah you have 52k yeah. followers right so <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, what it takes to maintain uh, this big page and uh, what are your plans to grow how how are you planning to grow it further basically okay, if you so, can talk about and help people understand how difficult it can be on the instagram pages to grow and uh, what it and really how is easy. right because you do it like outside of your work out of your yeah. passion you are doing it but what it yeah. really takes <clears throat> so first of all maintaining a page takes a lot of uh, time consistency and a lot of creativity so uh, so i'll start with the the covid story like during the covid when i it's got very serious about the page a lot of creators started posting because everybody has time so people started creating but uh, as soon as the uh, lockdown uh, was over and you know things uh, became normal people stopped posting because that is the problem with creativity because you know you have to be consistent because uh, these softwares these uh, applications they have their own algorithm and once you stop posting they treat your page as dead page so you always have to be active you know like stories posts and everything and then the biggest uh, problem is thinking of new concept every second third day that is the very big problem like you can't keep creating so that is a thing which is a like 
very major hurdle and you have to keep thinking of new ideas and there is a point when you you know you reach that saturation point and you feel like you know iske aage nahi ho payega <laughs> so that happened with me also a lot of time it happens you know it actually it is happening also <laughs> like you know this is a phase where i'm uh, dealing with the creative block and everything but then uh, you you will have to get out of it you know if you are serious about your consistency you can post your uh, previous pro, uh, post or anything but be consistent on the page because that is how you tell the algorithm that you are there and you are you know working on it so that is one thing and about the future what i think of this page so initially like uh in like 21 or something i i thought like you know i will make this big and everything then i i saw is there anybody else with the name of designer space like in legal terms so i got to know like there are people so i can't use the same name but obviously i have plans to make this page bigger and you know keep it alive for long long years and i'm also getting uh, uh, to start with reels now i'm starting to post my freelance works also the process and everything because uh, it's just not about minimal designs i want the designers community to also know how things work like the people the kind of designers who are following me i want them to know how things work because i just tell them that this is the logo project that i have done this is the you know social media project that i have done but i also want them to know what goes behind it like a glimpse of it because i can't tell the entire process but obviously some part of it that will help them so i have seen your story uh, on your instagram page right um, that due to static posts you are getting less reach and maybe that's how instagram is influencing influencers to make reels so yeah, do you yeah, really think we will get more reach or uh... i mean there's no debate about it it is true but mm-hmm. it it's not like you can't grow without reach you know because yeah. uh when when reels started i i used to put like some few reels i tried with like 5 to 10 reels but i understood that that's not my part and i can't do that because firstly we don't have time in the full time job we don't get a lot of time to you know edit and do everything and all that kind of stuff so there's no time for it and also our photo is static uh, designs you know the impact that static designs have the videos can't have it so i uh, uh, like i was keen to uh, stick to the static design only and i was like i am going to continue this so the entire uh, following that you are seeing is all because of static designs only i did not go to reels at all and i have seen a lot of people who are making reels on a regular basis and their pages are not growing so more than algorithm it depends on the content and the the quality of the content you know if that is good static and real won't matter and obviously there is a part of algorithm that doesn't allow you to you know have the entire freedom of making static and real and grow all together but uh, i mean you can get over it it's not a big deal yeah, i have I mean, done this if you have a lot of times and you know people can do it yeah if you've gotten to 50k without reels i mean that's a big thing to be honest and um, once you start making content uh, the quality reels obviously your reach will like increase like anything but um, how do you deal with the yeah. issue yeah yeah how do you deal with the issue of uh, people copying your designs and maybe starting an instagram page taking inspiration from your designs and putting it out there just as you've done it yeah th- that's a very very big issue about instagram because firstly you can't do anything about it secondly uh, even if people are doing the same thing and they are copying the entire uh, the post first of all you won't know that people are doing it secondly if you know that and uh, and you try to tell people that don't do it it's not legal you know i have the copyright and and all that kind of stuff i i had a very funny incident <laughs> so i approached this guy he had posted like hundred hundreds of my posts on his uh, id all the posts Uh, without my logo he he just erased it somehow and he posted it and when i told him that dude this these are all my original designs and you can't copy and put it on your page like that he was like no but i saw it and now this is mine <laughs> and i was like <laughs> it doesn't work like that but are so there no laws you can report and you yeah okay 
so so yeah you can report and you get you know like try to put the page down and it, it's on instagram if they allow it yeah, because uh, in that case it helped and uh, instagram took his page down but still a lot of people post you know but you can't do anything about it you know like our original content will stay original and its reach will be unmatched so it I have like uh, I have uh, made a deal about this that it, it is fine and I don't uh, like take it very seriously now like let them copy let them post <laughs> it is like that now <laughs> so earlier during reels or like while posting videos right instagram don't allow to <clears throat> use the copyrighted music right uh, if i'm using any of the bollywood music or uh-huh. any any music right uh, like they won't allow it they just restrict the video but now they themselves allow to use those audios and go about it because otherwise their servers will be down <laughs> analyzing lot of these videos right so i think that's how instagram is working now they are, they are not basically um uh, uh have a mechanism to uh, analyze and restrict people based on the copyright yeah yeah that that is true you know like uh, if we complain and if we report that this is our work then also instagram needs to prove of your own design and the person who has copied so you you will have to prove it that that you know this is your original work and somebody has copied so that's a thing but it is like uh, how long are you going to do this you know you can do this for once what for twice for thrice but you can't do it for 50 people so you will have to deal with it because see there is a, a plus point so there will be something negative about it and that's how you know the entire world works everything has a plus point and a negative point you can't do anything about it. so what are your thoughts on artificial intelligence right because there are a lot of softwares these days that are using ai to uh, basically enhance the quality of the video or audio um, or like the reels that, are, that you are making right and also um, the editing is like little bit become easy these days right with, with all of these softwares so uh, how one can use this uh, matlab uh, what is the part of the ai in it and there are many websites also you just have to type and like they can generate photos right so yeah no so i, I think uh, so, just uh, yeah, to add, like just to add to mayank's question um, yeah. do you think uh, ai will take over the de- designer's role or <laughs> is it still safe <laughs> i was so happy nobody said this line it's <laughs> whenever anybody talks about ai the first statement is do you think it is going to overtake so okay so it is also very difficult for a designer to agree that it might take over but honestly it is not going to take over because i'll tell you what ai has a set of information that it is operating on you know and it can't operate on creativity you know it can do a thing that you want but it can't think like a human brain you know if if like we talk about uh, we tell a uh, uh, ai software to make a, a chair in shape of an avocado it can make it but if it uh, tell him uh, make a chair with a drum or bell or something it can't visualize the way we can visualize so there is a difference you know you can uh, take help for ai ai is beneficial you know like uh, it is good for us it makes our process easier but it is not going to replace it like but people using ai can replace the other people who are not using ai so there is a difference so you so, have yeah, to like be aware AI of the technology incorporated in your designs and all but yeah one has to be more creative and yeah definitely yeah. like graphic yeah. design and the digital design world is all about technology and you have to be updated you know you have to keep tracking what the uh, entire industry is going and you have to you know keep matching the things because yep. once you get outdated you know technology is a thing that goes out of trend in like years and months so you have to be up to date yep i agree that's true and have you used ai in any of your designs so far or have you explored the different platforms that are available 
yeah yeah i have explored a lot of designs so uh when i make any you know like post or anything for my clients so first i used earlier i used to struggle with copy a lot because i'm a designer i'm not a copywriter <laughs> and a lot of times you have to do that for your own designs you know and it was like very very difficult you know how to get a proper copy and i literally used to spend more time on copy instead of the design thing i used to spend like 2 3 hours on thinking of what do you mean by copy nice copy copy means the text text that goes okay. with the visual you okay. know so uh, i used to struggle a lot with that but then chat gpt and other uh, ai software have come to you know help us and to save our time so yeah it's very helpful and i use uh, like dali also i've used a lot of times for you know specific visuals that we don't get and we have to uh, spend hours making the same visual that we get it uh, from digital uh, platform so i mean yeah it is very helpful and it saves a lot of time so people should use it it's it's good but it's not going to replace <laughs> yeah and uh, what do you have to say to people who say that uh, um i can paint and i can draw using ai tools so i am a designer i mean now people are like anyone okay. can be a designer I, i i just have to type a few lines and commands and that's it i'm done uh, it might not be the way you want to visualize but it's still art yeah everyone's an artist now see uh, being an artist is not uh, that doesn't mean you can be a graphic designer you have to be an artist but you also have to be a commercial artist to be a graphic designer you know you you will have to be able to sell your design and if you are not able to sell your design it can be an art but you can't sell it you know then th- there's no point it can be a painting that is on the wall but nobody is buying it so what's the point of it you know th- there is a difference of making and uh, you know some painting or something and then selling it so that is a difference it, it's the same thing like you know how to uh, operate on photoshop how the software works but you don't know the visual uh, things like how to make visuals good with the uh, help of the tools so it's it's almost good for nothing so that is that is the difference that you have to be a artist and you also have to think like a commercial artist that's when you help uh, the visual community and you know the making ads and everything um are you pursuing law on the side because you make really convincing arguments and i think this this <laughs> stupid would become a video and pass it around whenever people are talking about uh this but i think that really no matter. i think so i'll tell you why because uh, i've uh, worked with a lot of newcomers new designers who don't know about the industry and also i have my own journey how i came to know about it, everything so it is like you know i was a raw designer now i know a lot about the industry so i know both the perspectives so that is how i can you know like convey for a person who is not from the industry to you know understand how everything works <laughs> not a lower student <laughs> again okay. great conversation yeah just to just to end the segment um uh, what's your favorite movie so far uh based on the graphic designing that you saw oh my god i'm so bad at movies and web series <laughs> <laughs> because you know my my life is very busy i don't get time to watch all this so she don't have life right? to movie she doesn't have a life yeah no <laughs> <laughs> i do i do guys and and we can't end this segment with like uh, what your uh, matlab how's your day look like like outside work yeah there's no day i mean there's just one there is no other <laughs> there there is a day <laughs> god i'm going to regret this <laughs> okay so when it comes to movies i like to watch like light hearted romantic you know some fun kind of movies comedy and something i don't want to take anything from okay. movies i don't want to take anything i just want to watch have fun and then forget it in just 10 minutes so that's how i watch movies uh, for specifically you know design related and that kind of so i like the animation that, uh, kind of stuff that uh, goes with uh, some cartoon movies you know the 3d characters and also i love that kind of movies that are like kids movies but 
I love it. <laughs> so that's that's what I watch for the fun part because I really love the three D characters. Yeah, those are like they are very very fun and the, every character is very new. You know, you you would have not seen it anywhere and it, it is like amazing. I find it very nice. Anytime soon, you will be going into VFX and all animations VFX. Uh no, I've not thought about it. I think no, I'm not going to do that because I think that's a uh, altogether a different career, you know. Like so, I'll I'll make it easy for everybody. But so many like, people confuse. Uh, there are. Ha ha ha! It mm. it is there, you know, because there's mm. not a, a lot of knowledge and you know uh, a lot of talks about it. So mm. uh, we know doctors, you know, काफी सारे doctors होते हैं, but every doctor is a specified doctor you know somebody is an eye specialist somebody is you know like for heart for kidneys and you know there is a category for that so the same thing happens with design industry so there are different different streams and there is you know uh, one specific cat- category where you can you know uh, excel and you you can be a, a good at it because you can't be an uh, all rounder i mean you can be <laughs> but you can't be best at everything you know you will you will be best at one thing and good at other thing so that is how it works so i think graphics are my forte where i can you know put everything and i'm good at uh, visual things and you know branding and that kind of stuff and animation and vfx are totally different vfx is way way different from designing so i'm not going there <laughs> got it i think uh, that's that's the end of it the end of the segments so far and uh, thanks thanks for your time pooja thanks for having uh, thanks for coming to the podcast and it was a pleasure having you here yeah thank you thank you, thank so, you much. so much it was thanks nice for having me and it was fun yeah great. yeah thank you yeah.